Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Fraunhofer EAS with Benjamin Proch, who's going to talk today about how to improve analog design and also make it much simpler, much faster uh, time to market while not sacrificing reliability. A lot of the world is heading in analog. Everything that we're doing with sensors, all the physical uh, world that we're trying to digitize uh, comes through analog sensors. But designing these has typically been a, a, a much different process than what we've been doing in the past. And it's been taking a lot of time. It's fairly slow. It doesn't necessarily transfer from one design to the next. What are you seeing and what's, how do we go about solving this? First of all, we should look from the analog worlds uh, towards the digital worlds. In digital, uh, we have a lot of automation helping the designers to improve uh, design, to improve the speed, the accuracy, the quality of the designs. And it's actually no more possible without automation. In analog, we try to adapt this idea. We are actually not the first to do this, um, but uh, we guess that we yeah, especially spending a lot of effort to go into a direction where we can automate uh, migration a lot more better uh, to have it in a way designers like it. And with those tools, we guess to improve analog design. Typically, analog designers have resisted tools in the past. Has it, something changed here where they're willing to uh, adopt this? Yeah, well, they they have. I, I guess uh, there are several reasons for this, but one reason could be that these are uh, optimization-based approaches, or these were optimization-based approaches, which might get results which are not what designers do when they design on, on their own. What, what we do, on the other hand, is uh, we implement procedural generators and those generators reproduce what experienced designers put into the generator. So it's a yeah, experienced knowledge-based, uh, expert knowledge-based approach. And since good experience was uh, implemented, the designers are usually fine with what they will see. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So what's the problem we're trying to solve here? Yeah, the, the problem is that we would like to solve how analog design is done. Since in the environment, if you consider IoT, a lot of sensors, if you consider sensing in the context of Industry 4.0, we will at some point always have some system on chip where usually you also have the analog part on it. So this means it's a noise environment for the analog uh, parts to design. It's a tough task to design since, as already mentioned, Digital is automated, but analog is just hardly. And so we face yeah, some issues during design. So one part is the design in general. One other part is um, how to integrate IP from other IP vendors. And a third part is how to do design porting. When you think about analog, analog has always been lots of little pieces that were designed for a very specific use. And if you go into the analog vendors, they've got lots and lots of uh, different SKUs. The stock keeping units where they uh, will have one part for one specific thing. Each one is perfectly characterized. We're, tr we're moving into a world where we need to be able to move much faster than that. How do we accomplish that? The way we do this on first hand is that we try to accelerate design itself. This means rather than moving a lot of transistors here just sketched uh, on the schematic level, but also in the layout uh, level, we try to higher the level of abstraction towards working with basic building blocks such as differential pairs, current mirrors, and the like. And the idea is that from a single source, where you can define parameters, where you can define details of maybe the topology and other things we implemented into the generator, you can customize your sub-block and customize all the blocks for your design. And since schematic, symbol, layout view are contained, it's consistent and you can work on that level of abstraction. And in the past, we accelerated design by approximately 40 to even 60 percent. One of the solutions in the past has been to almost digitize most of the analog IP. What you're talking about here is a little bit different. It's more toward 
uh, customizing the analog itself and being able to move that at a different speed, right? Yes, exactly. So this here does not focus on how the schematic, uh, yeah, on how the topology is. This focus on how we design the topology, on how we do the procedure, and we want to, yeah provide paths in order to speed up the design. If you imagine this block is already layouted, once you click the, bo bottom, uh, the, the button, it takes uh, on this level just a few seconds to get all the data you need and in the end you just assemble the layout and obviously that gets a lot faster and on the other hand, expert knowledge is part of these soft IPs, so whatever you need to consider in design and in the PDK is already considered in those blocks. One of the things that we're hearing more and more of is designs have to be done faster. Now we've, we've heard that in the past and we've had a lot of tools, but reality is designs typically take a year to 18 months no matter what. There's a big rush to speed that up because we have a lot of new markets that need to be addressed. Have you taken a uh, an AI chip, for example, and you wait 18 months to put this thing out, all the algorithms will have changed, and that's happening almost everywhere with machine learning. Now what you're talking about is moving this a lot faster. Exactly. So what we also would like to, to go is that uh, not, not just the design itself speeds up, but also how to integrate IP, uh, which exists. So if you, if you consider that a uh, IP was developed for, for example, some certain process, uh, say in one and a half years, uh, then at some point the decision will usually be made to, to move to some other processes. Maybe some other nodes, but maybe just another flavor. And even, even just minor changes might cause a big change in the analog design. So this is where we would like to uh, address the flexibility since we can adapt the approach hierarchically to much more complex blocks. And once we design a complex block, we can reuse it in multiple systems. As we turn this into more of a rigid design type of discipline as opposed to the old way of doing analog, do we get more consistent results? We will certainly do. So because whatever we designed as such generator is a single source. This means once an experienced designer will put as much of his knowledge as possible into basically the source code, the, the source of what generates these blocks, and whatever he considers, might it be aging, might it be electromigration, might it be certain considerations for the particular uh, process, uh, process which we can consider in, in an abstract way, this all will be part of um, the, the generators. This is going to become very important as we start moving into a world of new packaging and chiplets, right? Because what you're trying to do is come up with consistent ways of putting these things together fairly quickly. Yes, of course, putting things together, that's, that's a tough task, especially if you consider the, the interface from analog to digital, but of course also the interface of the entire system on chip. Interfaces in general are a very good source for uh, faults in the design, especially since automation in analog is not that straightforward. It's a mixture of, in the worst case, say, uh, a, a set of specification documents, and from the specification document you have a manual path to how the patch frame, as an example, looks like, how the interface is, and so on. So. If you put these considerations in the best case from specification to, uh, in, into this flexible block and even consider uh, issues at the interface, then of course you can, can solve this issue. But, but that's, that's an even more complex uh, thing to do. I guess that's part where many tools of automation should collaborate. Another big issue that we have to wrestle with is analog is typically custom designed for each application. There's very little reuse or minimal reuse that goes on with, with analog versus digital, for example. Is that starting to change? Can you solve that problem? Yes, porting is 
certainly the focus on what we do. So it's not only porting of the specification, which we do using a set of parameters, which we can customize. It's also the change of topologies, which we can add into the generator or even into an entire library, because our approach is that we have a library of multiple generators, which are used in order to address the design issue. And third, not just sizing and topology, but also the process uh, is described independently in the generator. This means that the source code, which describes the structure, which describes all layout, symbol and schematic, is generic and we use a technology interface to adapt the particular design data into the generic description, which finally means that the, I, uh, the, the, the generator we have designed can be re-executed in any process for which we have this technology interface. One of the big problems as we start moving down to advanced nodes, as well as even some existing nodes, and, and there are so many nodes that are coming out that it's hard to even keep them straight anymore, is that the IP may not be available for that. And one of the big problems is the analog IP, because some of these are fairly uh, small pieces or they're, uh, they're fairly well defined and they're, they, they're time consuming to develop. Does this start solving some of that problem? Yeah, that's of course a, a huge topic. So once we get, uh, go to a new PDK, to a new process, then well, from our point of view, basically it's a new PDK. And especially when the process is just ramping up, uh, then the PDK might not be final. That's the problem for IP design, because IP vendors can't give you the final IP because the, the process is not, not, not already there. What we could do, on the other hand, is use generators, define topologies and uh, yeah, the layout in a generic way, which can be adapted afterwards. This means if the process uh, will change a little bit, it's just a matter to the technology interface, everything happens automatically and you will get a valid layout finally, what, what, what in the end is what we want to get. And that's maybe interesting uh, when we consider design porting, because we start from a well-defined uh, structure of designs we know already. And once this is defined as a generator, we can move this to the next PDK, even though the PDK itself is still in progress. And the good thing about this is that we can skip a lot of parts of the very time-consuming and therefore cost-consuming design. Benjamin Prout, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.